What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at large. Today I am at the Fern Cliff Cemetery here in Greenberg, New York. I'm here to visit the grave of the one and the only Aaliyah. There are only two singers that I remember exactly where I was at when I heard that they died. One of them is Michael Jackson. When I found out that he died, I was washing dishes at a Thai restaurant in Redmond, Washington when I heard it while I was working, listening to the radio. The second was Aaliyah. When I found out that she died, I was riding my scooter to my friend's house. I go upstairs, I open the door, and his girlfriend immediately tells me, dude, Aaliyah just died. And the radio was playing all of her music and it felt like to me a in both moments a very surreal feeling so Aaliyah was born on January 16th 1979 she was born in Brooklyn New York and at an early age her family knew that she was a good singer and she loved to sing she would perform at school functions she was singing in the church choir and as she got older her uncle Barry Hankerson, who was an entertainment lawyer, would introduce her to Gladys Knight. He was married to Gladys Knight. And when she was 10 years old, she appeared on the television program, Star Search, uh, singing with Gladys. And as Gladys would tour, she would sometimes bring Aaliyah on to sing uh, duets with her. By the time she was 12, she had already signed a record contract with Jive Records. And of course, she got a little bit older and they start making her debut album and she is introduced to a man by the name of R. Kelly. R. Kelly was the main songwriter and producer for her first album, which was Age Ain't Nothing But A Number. And there was always rumors going around online that Aaliyah, who I believe at that time was either 14 or 15 years old, was actually married to R. Kelly, who was quite a bit older than her. I want to say at least a dozen years older. So once it became known that they actually were married, uh, she immediately disbanded from Jive Records and she signed with another record label. Her debut album, AJ Nothing But A Number, sold 3 million copies. That's pretty good for being a uh, relatively somewhat unknown singer. But of course, having R. Kelly, who was the producer of the album, on your side is going to help uh, promote album sales and such forth. So on her next album which was one in a million. It also sold three million copies. It was certified double platinum, and I believe it sold about seven or eight million copies worldwide. Uh, I mean, back and forth, one in a million, try again. I mean, she had hit after hit. She was an excellent singer, uh, an excellent dancer, and not many people know this, but while she was alive and she was having all these number one singles and these double platinum albums, she was still going to school and she was still maintaining a 4.0 GPA. She basically said, hey, listen, I'm young and rich right now, but you know, this is all fleeting. I need to be able to fall back on something Education to me is very paramount. It's a very important. You could easily see that Aaliyah was going to be more than just a singer and a dancer and a pretty face. Uh, she had goals and aspirations of doing other things in the music industry. Uh, she was uh, raised by a very close-knit and tight family. Uh, and that's something to be commended. Most people who are 17 years old 
who are millionaires aren't going to be thinking about school you know in terms of their future they're going to be thinking about what can i buy and all this or all that so that that tells me that even though she was very well off and you know very famous she was a very very grounded uh, to say the least and also she was a actress a budding actress i believe she was in the um, matrix reloaded uh, Romeo Must Die, starting with Jet Li and DMX, of course, uh, a great hip-hop rapper that recently passed. And she was uh, in the process of filming Queen of the Damned, which was pretty much all filmed when she passed away. So we're going to talk about the unfortunate series of events that led to that tragic plane crash that occurred on August 25th of 2001. So on the week of August 22nd of 2001, Aaliyah was scheduled to fly from Florida to the Bahamas to film a video for her single, Rock the Boat. So they get to Florida and she films the green screen portions of the video. And then after that, they take a flight with her, her entourage, which included her hairdresser and her bodyguard. They fly to the Bahamas and they spend a couple days filming the video and they wrapped up uh, quickly than expected. They were scheduled to fly out of the Bahamas on the 26th, but because they wrapped up so fast, uh, they rescheduled their flight for the 25th. So. They get to the plane, which was a, I believe, a twin engine Cessna, who was piloted by a man by the name of Louis Morales. Now, her and her entourage, which included Aaliyah and seven others, they get to the plane, and that particular plane was only designed to hold seven passengers, including the pilot. So they bring their luggage, and the pilot is looking at all their luggage and counting eight people and he said hey listen uh, this plane is only designed to hold seven people including myself uh and you have way too much luggage now this is according to eyewitness testimony and they were very very adamant now they don't point the finger on who exactly was the one that they were uh so adamant about going 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 but uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, argument, if you will, about them really needing to make time and fly out of there because they had prior engagements elsewhere. So reluctantly, the pilot, you know, boards all the passengers, loads their luggage, and that same eyewitness who was working at that airport of the at the time witnessed the plane take off according to his testimony he said that when the plane took off it lifted off and it went to about 100 feet in the air and about 200 feet past the runway and then it nose dived into the ground he immediately heard a large impact he raced to the scene to see if he could find any body that needed help or any survivors and when he got to the wreckage he seen two men who were very very badly burned one was uh, screaming for help and the other guy was just screaming too and he noticed that there was another man who was Aaliyah's bodyguard and he said all the bodyguard kept asking about was is Aaliyah okay is Aaliyah okay and by the time the paramedics got to the scene um, it was already too late uh, Aaliyah had died from her injuries from the plane crash uh, which was caused by it being overloaded um, by about 700 pounds, according to the NTSB report. Uh, everybody on the plane died, including the pilot, 